I'm super excited. It's James Barr. This is the live sessions, and we've got magic. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, man. So how are you? So it's Nazri, Mark, Ben, Alex. Um, and James. And James. I'm now part of the band. Um, so you guys have finally hit the UK. What have you done whilst you've been here? Anything cool? Um, you know, you know, we're here to do promotion, so we've been in a lot of the radio stations and doing interviews and stuff, but uh, once we got here, we all went and had some delicious... Indian food, so. So you've been checking out the, the culture, basically? Yeah, I mean, a little bit culture. of it, you know, it's like you're jet-lagged. The, the first two days, exactly. The first two days are, are usually tough because you're jet-lagged and your body's just confused. Um, but, you know, we, you could just go for a walk and, and in any new country and it's just, wow, like, look at all this stuff I've never seen before. Yeah, you need to try some fish and chips whilst you're here. Oh, uh, we talked about that, actually. Yeah. So. Served on newspaper. Yeah. On newspaper. I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't think they do that anymore. No, because it's not hygienic. Is yeah, it? We went to watch the final. We went to watch the World Cup final at a bar. That was cool. That must have been fun. It was fun, yeah. Sure. Mental. Germany won, so. Yeah, yeah. It did. Great atmosphere. Go Europe. Um, you've been working in music for ages, um, but now finally sort of working together as Magic. Um, and Nazri, you've written for artists like Chris Brown, uh, Justin Bieber. That's pretty exciting, which is yeah, the most yeah. sort of phenomenal artist to work with. It is, it is. You know, um, you know, writing for people is great because you don't have to, the pressure is not on you and at that time in my life I didn't want the pressure on me, I just wanted to serve other people's purposes and, and then I, when I met Mark I was like, you know what, I'm ready for that pressure, I'm ready to, to step forward and he was too and we started Magic. And which is like, just on that, which was the most phenomenal artist to work with? Phenomenal, that's a heavy, heavy word. Um, you know, it's, it's not always the biggest artist. You know, there was this artist named Javier Colon that I worked with, who his voice is incredible. He won the voice in um, in the states, and it was like he had like built-in reverb into his voice. It was just unbelievable to hear this guy sing. Um, so, but the big artists are great too. Justin is such a star, and, and Pitbull is such a gracious guy, and and uh, knows what he wants. But um, I'd say that session with Javier was pretty mind blowing. Pitbull definitely knows what he wants from watching oh, yeah. his music videos. He knows exactly what he wants. <laughs> so, did you feel like you were pigeonholed as a writer at that moment, and you wanted to? No, get it's your scene? choice to be pigeonholed. You know, it's your choice. If if somebody you know uh, says something, that doesn't mean you have to believe it. You know, I didn't feel anything. I just do, I just do what I want, and we do what we want as a band, and we work with our team, and, it, and it's working. Yeah, so you kind of do like breezy pop, reggae, mm -hmm. anthems. Was that like a natural decision when you went and did that? I mean, in, in some ways it uh, was a natural decision, and, and in other ways it was something, I'm not going to say calculated, but we had previously discussed it. I mean, Nazari had the idea to start a band in the style of The Police, because uh, about five years ago he did a song with his production partner, Adam Messenger. Um, the first one actually that kicked off the sort of sonic and musical vision, it was called uh, Mama Didn't Raise No Fool. And so from the framework of that song, we were like, yeah, let's start a band that kind of sounds like the police and the whalers. And so yeah, there was a bit of a roadmap in mind. It wasn't just like we naturally um, immediately played the reggae. But because we came up in Toronto when there's a huge Jamaican Caribbean population there, we had the sensibilities to, to be able to play that style of music, you know, and at least learn from it and, and try to present it in, a, in pop. And uh, yeah, so I think it was it was in some ways natural, in some ways calculated. Some of the tracks on the album as well, they're very, you can hear it, you can hear the police reference. Absolutely. Much heavier than on Rude. Absolutely. Um, and the album's done massively well, like top five in Canada, US, that's amazing, right? Yeah, it's amazing. It is, you know, I mean, that was probably the most nervous part for me. I know the guys too, when the album came out, not about the sales, it was about just like, are people going to like it as much as we like it? We felt like... Because after we started with like, okay, here's the idea, then we dove into it and our spirits started to connect to it and it became this natural, we are magic now. Um, then yeah, I was like, are they going to like it? You know, and they love it, so, so we're, all we're very relaxed. <laughs> you do seem kind of relaxed, you're very like chilled but excited and positive. Well, we're, we're sitting on very nice, comfortable couches here. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice vibe in this room. It's something it is. Right, so Rude has been in my head for ever. It's like one of the big songs of the summer in the UK. But this isn't actually a real situation, this didn't actually happen. No, no, it didn't, you know. But a lot of the fans are telling us that it's happened to them. 
which um, we were shocked. We were like, really? That's still something that happens? The guy says no. Um, you would think that the guy would actually like get to know the father for a while and yeah. ask at the right time, you know? <laughs> but uh, I guess you got you fellas need to learn. You got. I mean, I can't believe yeah, I can't believe butter him up a little more. Dare say that? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand it. I mean, you know, not every uh, daughter makes uh, the right decisions or chooses the right guy. So it's um, and not every guy uh, knows how to work with the team of a family. So. You just need to prep the man a little more. <laughs> you know, prove yourself worthy of his... Individually though, have you guys ever had an awkward moment with a girlfriend's dad? Oh, sure. I always try to be super respectful of my ex-girlfriend's uh, parents and stuff. They're all, you know, great people. But I did run into a situation where they were disapproving one time. And uh, it wasn't due to any, you know, I think, mistake on my part, not buttering them up or per se, but it was just the fact that I was a musician and uh, they were both really successful in the business world and I think they had envisioned a lot more of a stable monetary situation for their daughter <laughs> that at the time I was not able to provide. So yeah. I did feel like, and it wasn't like they were ever like completely mean or rude to me necessarily, but I knew that they were, you know, not ex particularly excited by that. So Not was, feeling the Italian style. Not feeling me. That, well, that's so stupid because look at you now, you know, world famous. Right, buddy? Look at this. Exactly, yeah, right? <laughs> to get back in touch with that family. I'm by you. I'm in this amazing country. Yeah. Things are good. Yeah, exactly. You'll get a message from her soon. He doesn't love her anymore. So. No, he's good. Oh, no. Fine. He's over it now. Over back it. off. Over and done. He's not even going to read your comment. That's right. Um, so, Rude, you're going to perform for us, which I'm really excited about. You're going to perform for the live sessions. What's the other track you're doing today? Oh, that's a secret. <laughs> well, that's a way to see what that is. Okay, so I can't know anything more about no. that track. Can you tell us like why that track's important to you? Uh, you know, it's it's just you know we like to keep a little mystery and and um, but it's about a guy who knows what he wants and and uh, he says no whatever happens and then he says something. If I say it, then I give away. I know saying. already. Oh, you know it. Is it no? I can't remember the name, it's like no something, no. It's no, no way now. Ah, uh, uh, there we go. Well, we made you work for it. You did. <laughs> I feel really, um, like, I don't know what's the word, like accomplished. You're accomplished. You are. Yeah, <laughs> now that I worked that out. Um, well, that's that's cool. And the album is out soon. So The album you is, you know, out? the album's already out in the States and it's out in a lot of, a bunch of can uh, countries and the response is amazing. So if we get the same response here, then um, we are living a nice dream. I, I dream. Um, what about the next album? You must have started working about on that or thinking about that. Yeah, I mean we're songwriters, you know, yeah. so we're always writing. Um, are those songs to the next album? Who knows? Um, but they probably are. <laughs> <laughs> and are, they, are they based on experiences you're having now, or are they? Yeah, of course. I mean, we were writing some of the songs during the first album that was on the second album. You know, yeah. it's like and ideas because we're always writing. It's like little things, little hook, and then it sits and. Next you know you're singing, you're like, what's that? Is that like a Tom Petty song? You're like, no, that's something I came up with. Like, oh yeah, that's good, you know? And Do you guys like write notes in your phone? Like, oh my yeah. god, that's something weird just happened. Mm -hmm. Basically. Well, a lot of everything now is like voice notes, you know? So you just put like a, an actual audio. Okay. Um, I don't really write lyrics down. I just try, I try to memorize them. Uh, but yeah, second album, we'll get there. Okay. First album. First album. Out first. Soon. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's okay. Um, okay. I was gonna say, well, what was your last audio note that you recorded? Oh, the last audio note was yesterday. We were doing um, some thing and we were singing "Rude," and then I remember we were, Ben and I were messing around with a melody that could be in "Rude" and then kind of change the chords and had this whole other song. It was like weird. But okay. it was like kind of like a, a jump off of Root. Like a kind of remix or like a... No, no, a just too. a melody that got inspired by Root. How exciting. God, I can't wait for that. But first album, first album first. Um, so when do we get a UK tour? Is that going to happen? Of course, of course. Yeah, I mean everything... One, now that the song's out and the album comes out, uh, I hope we're back as soon as we can get back. And it'll probably be in the fall. Okay, exactly. that sounds exciting. Um, and do you think we'll get any actual magic on tour? No. Nope. <laughs> I knew you were going to say no. Just just music. Yeah, just the music. Yeah. No, man. Music. Have any of you ever tried your hand at magic before? Well, Ben did some impressive tricks, actually, when we were in San Francisco. We had this magic kit. Tell yeah, me about they, it, man. They, you know, sometimes they, they think it's cute to leave us some cool magic toys and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it, it sparks my interest and I try it out. How do you do this? And 
So I learned how to make a red ball disappear. You made a ball disappear. He I, showed, I, mean, I could showed actually everybody make, that trick. I could actually make it appear in your pocket. Could you? What now? Um, well, not right. I don't. I don't have the ball. Oh uh, uh, right. <laughs> but that's the whole point, right? You make it appear. It's well, no, it has to. I have to have how, it. That's how magic works. No, I have to have it, and then I make it disappear. <laughs> okay, right. I have to have it. First. But listen, because you guys are obviously not that experienced at magic, I've brought my very own magician with me today. Nice. So Stu, my friend, is going to join us right now. <clears throat> He's going to show us some wow, actual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Here he is, magician wow, Stu. Stu, 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 Stu guys, <laughs> you must take a jump cut in there and make that actually happen. Yeah, exactly. Click. Okay. So what are you going to show us, Steve? Just, let's just do a very simple card trick. Can you just cut the deck into two piles for me? Cool. And with that pack, could you just take off maybe, how long have we got? Four, five, maybe five, five, six, seven cards, something like that. In any order? Any, yeah. Have these been shuffled properly? Seven? Right? Yes, yeah, yeah, it should be, yeah, yeah. Seven cards. Yeah, OK. Um, right, so each one of you take a card. If you want to take two cards, that's fine. Please. Can I show everybody? Uh, I'll turn away if you want to show somebody. I don't mind. No, it's okay. Are you go okay? Cool. Yeah. What I want you to do, just focus on your card. Okay, okay. just keep it in your or head. Cards. Uh. Or cards. Yeah, plural if you have to. Uh, okay. Someone's got a king. I think it is a black king, king of spades. Anyone got king of spades? I do. Yes, cool. Put that down there for me. Um, someone else has another. Well, I said spades, there's another spade, but it's a lower spade. Someone got the ace? Ace of spades? There we go, cool. Um, right, just keep looking at your cards for me. <laughs> Someone's got a seven. It's a uh, seven of... It's a red seven. Seven of diamonds? Anyone got seven of diamonds? There we go, cool. Um, <laughs> and there is... Going... Oh, um, another black one. It's a low black one. It's a... It's another spade. It's three of spades? Someone got three of spades? Thank you. Wow. Um, you've got two cards, yeah? This which is just look at This them. is voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> just look at the two of them for me. Alternate between the two. Okay, so it's one of them is a... I'm getting a five of hearts and a ten... No, not ten. A queen of... Clubs. Queen of clubs. There you go. And finally you. You have... Oh, God, come on. Looks very stressful. I know, it really is. I should have had some This can't be a joyful experience. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Another club. Low club. Ace of clubs. Thank oh you. my lord. I wow. am blown away. How much money is in my wallet? <laughs> Give it up for Steve. Oh. Thank you very much. Dude, that was Thank you. So, so, next time I see a girl on the street, would you be able to get her phone number? <laughs> Did you just know her phone number? I don't mean asking for it, I mean not asking for it. I could probably figure out a way of getting it. Yeah, I could get it. Yeah, I could get a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go now before I leave. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah, Give it up for Steve. Great. I was hoping it was going to get sawn in half, but my mind is blown even more. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the live Thanks session, guys. It was awesome. Cheers. And I can't wait to see your session. Thank you. High five. Thanks, man. Hey. Just do it, it's more of a hit. Marry that girl, marry her anyway, marry that girl, yeah, no matter what you say, marry that girl, it will be a family.